Hello everyone. Have you ever seen a maze like this? Or maybe an office with cubicles? Can you tell me what purpose do these cubicles serve? Correct. They transform an entire studio into smaller chambers so that workers can work in their own chambers. A similar structure is present inside the cell which is known as the endomembrane system that consists of endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi bodies, etc. And that divides the cell into several chambers where different types of reactions can take place. Well, that is only one of the functions of the endomembrane system. We are going to talk about them in details. So today, let us talk about endoplasmic reticulum. The endoplasmic reticulum, as the name suggests, is endo meaning inside, plasmic meaning plasma or cytoplasm, reticulum meaning a network, is therefore a network of membranes that is present inside the cell cytoplasm. It was discovered independently by Porter and Thompson in 1945. However, Porter named it endoplasmic reticulum. The endoplasmic reticulum is a membrane that divides the cytoplasm into two areas. First, the extraluminal space that is the cytoplasmic space and the luminal space that is the space that is enclosed within the endoplasmic reticulum. If you imagine the office and the cubicle situation again, let's say there are two cubicles in an entire office. Then the two cubicles, the space that they enclose is the luminal space and the space outside the cubicles is the extraluminal or the cytoplasmic space. Here we are considering that the cubicles, the wall of the cubicles are the endoplasmic reticulum. Now if you look at the endoplasmic reticulum, the entire structure consists of three kinds of subparticles. One, cisterni which are flat, double membrane bound sheets. Two, tubules which are tubular cylindrical membrane bound structures that may or may not be branched. And three, vacuoles or vesicles which are membrane bound sac like structures for storage and for passage of substances from the endoplasmic reticulum to the Golgi bodies. Now sometimes there are granular particles that are found on the surface of the endoplasmic reticulum. If granular particles are found and you look closer you will see that these granules are actually ribosomes. The ribosomes as we all know is the protein synthesizing machinery of the cell. We will talk about ribosomes in details in a separate video but let's come back to what happens when the ribosome is attached to the surface of the endoplasmic reticulum. If the ribosomes are attached on the surface, surface of the endoplasmic reticulum, the surface appears rough or granulated under the microscope and that is why such endoplasmic reticulum are known as rough endoplasmic reticulum and those endoplasmic reticula which do not have ribosomes attached on its surface, the surface appears pretty smooth without any granules and they are known as smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Now ribosomes remain attached to the surface of the endoplasmic reticulum by two types of proteins riboporin 1 and riboporin 2. So what are these proteins? The riboporins are basically pores that are created. These are hollow cylinders that are formed of proteins. These pores are present or these hollow cylinders are embedded on the wall of the endoplasmic reticulum to create a passage. Imagine you take a hollow cylinder and if you just implant it on a let's say lemon and squeeze the lemon then the juice might come out. So similarly these riboporins as the name suggests these are porous they make pores on the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum. These are structures through which proteins synthesized by the ribosome goes into the endoplasmic reticulum. So imagine this. The ribosome is synthesizing a protein. The protein goes inside the endoplasmic reticulum through those pores and it is like a rope that keeps the ribosome attached to the endoplasmic reticulum. The cisterni are arranged parallel to each other in most of the cases. The vesicles range from about 
20 to 500 nanometers in diameter, whereas the tubules are above 50 to 100 nanometers in diameter. Now, all these structures together form what we call the endoplasmic reticulum. So, where is this endoplasmic reticulum exactly present in the cytoplasm? So, inside the cytoplasm, the endoplasmic reticulum remains scattered everywhere. You might find the endoplasmic reticulum attached to the cell membrane and ending in the cytoplasm or they may be attached to the nuclear membrane ending in the cytoplasm or sometimes the endoplasmic reticulum spans from the cell membrane till the nuclear membrane as well. Most of the times we see that endoplasmic reticulum is rich in those cells which have secretory functions because endoplasmic reticulum is responsible for formation of protein and lipid. So what are the functions of these channels? Apart from the fact that it divides the entire cytoplasm into several chambers, endoplasmic reticulum has a lot of secretory action. Let's deal with them. Let's talk about them one by one. First, the endoplasmic reticulum divides the entire cell into separate chambers so that different reactions can take place in different parts of the cell. So that the products and the substrates and the enzymes do not get mixed with each other thereby reducing the efficiency of a reaction. Also because it is variously folded and intensively folded it creates a greater surface area for action for reactions taking place inside the cell. Two. The rough endoplasmic reticulum has ribosomes attached on its surface. So its obvious function is to synthesize proteins. So all those cells which are responsible for synthesis of protein, for example, the melanin secreting cell of your body will be very rich in rough endoplasmic reticulum. The protein that is formed from the ribosome goes in inside the endoplasmic reticulum, keeps the ribosome attached to the endoplasmic reticulum and finally from the endoplasmic reticulum it goes to the Golgi bodies for further action. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum is responsible for synthesis of lipids. Since ribosomes are not attached to it, the smooth endoplasmic reticulum have not been found to synthesize any protein. So all those cells which are synthesizing lipids have very high amounts or number of smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Apart from this, smooth endoplasmic reticulum is also responsible for detoxifying toxic products inside them. You know, sometimes we consume substances which contains or from cellular reactions, substances are formed which are toxic for us. A slight nick here and there breaking down a few lipids or amino acids or carbohydrates will render them non-toxic. So that is what is done by the smooth endoplasmic reticulum as well. To sum it up, endoplasmic reticulum is the site for synthesis of all proteins and lipids. These proteins can be structural proteins. These proteins can also be functional proteins like enzymes, hormones and some of the hormones are also lipid derivatives, so hormones also, lipid hormones as well. So final function of the endoplasmic reticulum is membrane biogenesis. What does that mean? It means that the proteins and the lipids produced from the endoplasmic reticulum can be used in synthesizing the cell membrane or the unit membrane in any part of the cell if it has been damaged or lost. Right? So let's say a certain part of the mitochondrial membrane has been damaged. To resynthesize that you will need proteins and lipids that can be supplied from the endoplasmic reticulum. So it has been found that during cell division, a large number of proteins and lipids are formed from the endoplasmic reticulum and modified in the Golgi body so that new and fresh cell membranes can be formed in the daughter cells, especially in plants. So does the endoplasmic reticulum itself form functional proteins? No. The endoplasmic reticulum forms the raw materials which need to be modified by the Golgi bodies so that they can be turned into functional proteins. Then they get enclosed in a sac in the Golgi body to form what is called vacuoles. If the vacuole contains digestive enzymes like acid hydrolases, we call those vacuoles lysosome. So as you can understand, endoplasmic reticulum forms 
proteins that go to the Golgi bodies for maturation and from there lysosomes are formed. So these three together function in the formation of proteins and packaging them. That is why it is known as the GERL or the GERL complex, Golgi body, endoplasmic reticulum and lysosome complex. Now let me ask you a question. Please find out after some research from books and whatever educational sites you follow, why are red blood cells devoid of endoplasmic reticulum? Would it be of any use if the endoplasmic reticulum was present in the red blood cell? If yes, if not, tell me your reason behind it. So please find out these answers and please write it in the comments below. I wait eagerly to read your answers. Hope you enjoyed the video. Do hit the like button and share it with your friends if you did. You, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, hit the subscribe button right now. Click on the notification bell so that you do not miss any of our videos. Check out the full courses on our website and Android app Manocha Academy. All the links are given below. So let's stay connected and let's keep learning together. We are going to talk about them in details. So today, let's let. Shh. So today, take a bulb. Please.